We are live. Val Venus wasn't as ripped or jacked as I remember him being. You might not be looking at like the right photo. He was he. You know what it was? A lot of wrestlers, especially in that era, because obviously they're on fucking some type of sauce or whatever. They go through waves. You know what I mean? Like, what am I looking at there? Val Venus. Chippendale's Val Venus. Yeah, he wasn't like in my head. I remember him being like pretty ripped. I well, mean, he, I'm sure he's a big fucking dude. He's probably six three, two forty, six two, two forty, or something. I remember him being jacked. Yeah, you don't. He's he's not jacked. What about that one? He looks jacked in that one. No, he's definitely jacked. But like, I remember him being pretty shredded. I don't know. That must be that photo. He definitely. That's a what's it? A, a bad cycle right there. But episode 92, Menace and the Man, welcome. Wow. What are you sipping on over there? Uh, massive IPA. Great Ooh. South Bay. Going with a little blonde ambition. Well, I like to go with the massive, get the party started early. And then you coast out of there. A massive is getting the party started. Wasn't Was that what I brought? No, what I bring that one night when me, you, and Lewis went out. And I didn't even realize when I brought like one of your uh, strong beers. I had... Uh, I had a, uh, a golden monkey by this company called Victory, and it was like they're like nine point fives. And I was already two in the bag with those, and I was like, "Stan, grab a couple beers for the road." And you're like, "We're in the car." I'm like, "Hand me back, hand me up one." I'm like, "Stan, I fucking specifically told you not to put this one in there because of how heavy it is. If I drink this third one, I'm going to be off my fucking rocker." Probably the, what I do? Probably the meanest you've ever the meanest and littlest you've ever made me feel. You were like, "You fucking idiot. Like, why did you bring this?" And I was like, "It's a beer. Why did you bring this? This beer." You did like one of those. I told you not to bring this one. Specifically. Of all the beers, not this one because this one's going to fucking annihilate me. And I threw it down the hatch and that's it. And you were annihilated that night. Yeah, it was bad. That's the night where we went to fights, and you punched me, and you lost your beer. Yeah, when? Good night, me, you, Lenny, your boy Lewis, and Lewis, yeah, the old gang. But yeah, we missed last week. We figured, we, you know what it was? Part you being super busy with the doubles, up two hundred feet in the air, and then we were trying to schedule Ricardo Lamas on here. Yeah, so we pushed it to Wednesday. And then I was like, yo, let's try it later in the week. I ended up, my son had practice on Thursday. My lady lives out there, so I just crashed over there. Just, you know, I'm trying to set up this rematch. Me and Ricardo Lamas? You and Ricardo in the streets. He don't, he don't want the smoke. And even that, too, what it was, you know, we run into it so much here, and you don't realize it is the time differences. And he, here I am. I knew, I had known a little bit he was from Chicago, but here I am thinking he's like a boy. I knew he was Chicago, yeah. I thought he was like a Latino from Miami. Uh, but no, nah, he's a, he's like a. I didn't know. I, you want to hear? I didn't even know they had Spanish people in Chicago. Oh, I always think Bilal's but, like <laughs> like Spanish. Well, that's yeah, he, he definitely passes like a Puerto Rican and like you know. Oh, yeah. And that's obviously a joke, people. But even Bilal, I love Bilal. Bilal started a new show. I would like to get Bilal on or even us on his show because his show is fucking funny. He plays a game show. Oh, but yeah. He basically gets two guests on and doesn't really interview them. He plays like a game show. And then he okay. ha- and then he has like sponsors who give you like a fucking rug, like a little fucking Persian rug. You know, he'll give you like like Jared. So that's even when we, if we get Jared on a little bit. So Jared's won twice. Jared won a gold chain, like a little thin, like we, you know, a funny gold chain and a rug. Wow. Yeah. He just does trivia. And then he'll do like some one funny thing he does is he'll do like, you have to go find a candle. The first person to find a candle. Then you have to run through your house and find a candle. And whoever does it first gets the point. Wow. I might book Menace Bermudas on the show, basically. Okay. It's up your alley. You'd definitely be a yeah. good guest. And then even when I saw it, I'm like, damn it, why didn't we come up with that idea? <laughs> where where does he do it? On like Instagram, Facebook? Um I, I think he, he he actually put me on to something that I want to try to do is just um 
they they stream it on Periscope, YouTube, and I think Facebook or something. They stream it on a few platforms live at once. You know what I mean? Why can't you do that with? I thought we talked about like you can't. They say you can't. You can't do it with Twitch only because you can do it with Twitch, but not if you want to be an affiliate. If you're an affiliate, they'll take away your affiliate. Which in your case, they would take away your affiliate if they caught on to that you were double dipping and whatnot. But we'll figure it out. But great show. But even um, so, what we miss? What we miss while you were uh, what 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 are you like two hundred feet in the air right there, right? Uh, yeah. So I I just got out of um bucket school. So I've been climbing poles, hooks, just you know climbing with a a choker belt and doing the work. And now I did bucket school. So you get up to the work so much faster. Um, but it can be annoying to like move around the pole. Cause if you're on one side, you have to get down, take the outriggers up, move the truck, put the outriggers back down, go back, you know, then fly back up, which is, you just wouldn't do that. You know? Yeah. So you now position your truck in a good spot, move around. So, just learn how to use, and then we got trained uh, Bronto training and like the big uh, transmission trucks that go up anywhere from ninety three feet to one hundred and seventy three feet. Now, are you blowing in the wind up there? Like, is it like you're you're up there and you're stiff, or you're up there and you're like? No, you're up there. If a gust of wind comes, like you'll feel the thing. Like you feel yeah. it go, go with the gust and then swing back a little bit yeah a little bit yeah so people would tell me stories like they'd be up there working on transmission working on some it wouldn't blow it blow them away from the work they would stop and they blow them back and then they they start working again so you have no problem you have, you basically no problem with heights well just like a fight kind of this guy be like well today might be the day that I go okay so now even that you're adapting a lot of your wrestling or fight training i'm sure to this new venture the learning and the just fucking doing it right yeah but i don't like it as much and i've i've told people you know like with wrestling and fighting if you get frustrated or like you don't get something you could just put all of your bodily energy into something else and it'll probably work out for you yeah you know with this i'm like like hold this wire make sure it doesn't touch this wire right here if it does it will blow up like uh. <laughs> sometimes i feel like i'm playing um operation operation yes yeah yeah bro, it's a dangerous job people uh it's no joke but a good transition for the menace so, yeah it's dangerous so what did we miss though we, I, did, I feel like did we talk about colby woodley or we didn't even talk about the we did talk about the results of that with a chic or no that was after a chic we missed that yeah, so Colby versus Woodley. Big Wo- No, I think we did talk about it. We did talk about it. And we talked about how it might be Usman versus Colby eventually, but then Gilbert. But that even got pushed back, Gilbert versus Usman. How far did it get pushed back? They're saying January, February. I was, I'm was. i going to try to get Gilbert on next week. I was thinking about even this week, but I just didn't because I wasn't sure what your schedule would be like. But um, he's going to do actually Bilal's show on Thursday. So, but Gilbert's always a good guest to get on any Ooh, show. Gilbert? Yeah. That's awesome. He's going to do against Darren Till, which is pretty funny. Wow. Yeah. Apparently, Bilal and Darren Till, because Bilal's a character on Twitter. So, right. Dar- him and Darren Till started exchanging some back and forth and then set it up. Wow. But, um, so Usman burns delayed. And I saw Ariel Hawani keeps pushing this Leon Edwards. He's trying to make Leon Edwards versus Gilbert right now is what he's pushing for. Who the fuck is Ariel Hawani? Yeah. You cover the fight. You're not a matchmaker. Yeah, but he's just giving it out there. But I just don't like that he keeps throwing Leon out there. Like, we've been over this. Leon needs a win. And it's not, yo, you got lucky or this guy's unlucky, so you're getting lucky. You know what I mean? Like, granted, that is a little bit what happened with him not being able to travel to the United States to fight Woodley. But even if he beat Woodley, I don't think that was, if he decisioned Woodley in a close fight, is that enough to warrant you being the guy? You know what I mean? Right. Granted, he does have this win streak, but the win streak, he needs, 
and I'm not shitting on the guys that he's fought, but as far as the welterweight top five, he just needs those names on there. You know what I mean? Gilbert's done too much too fast. Like, he went out of his way a few times for the UFC. Like, he, how many times has he fought during this COVID? Yeah. And even against, uh, who do you fight against? The names. Like, yeah. Like something I was saying with, if you look at the last few champions, other than GSP, who didn't fight him, the road to the welterweight title goes through Damian Maya. Did Leon Edwards stop there? No, he didn't. So you beat Cowboy. I don't think that, granted, people have beaten Cowboy and gotten title shots before. At so one, Nico Price can get a title shot? At 155. That's what I'm saying. At 155, it got like, you know, Tony Ferguson finally got his shot after beating Cowboy. But you look at like Max Holloway or Tony, they had to win. How many did Max have to win that time? I think Max had like 12 wins in a row before he got a title shot. Is it that many? I think so. Yeah. T- Tony had like 12 before he finally got a title shot. Sometimes it happens. Like, what would you have? Seven? Yeah. It would have taken you eight or nine wins at that point to get a title shot. Like, yeah. Leon Edwards just isn't there just yet. He needs those two more, one more big or two more. Gilbert has those on his, and not even that he has them. He has them impressively. He beat. And then there's also the that storyline. They trained. They train or trained together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like friends and foes turn foe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Leon's in a tough spot. Great fighter. Doesn't have the charismatic personality. Doesn't have the huge he following. Got punched, he got punched backstage by Masvidal. Is like his claim to fame, kind of. Yep. Fortune. Yep. The three piece and the soda. Yeah. And he'll never live as that. Guy, as the guy got three pieces in the soda. He'll never live that down. Unless he fights Masvidal in real life and fucks him up. I think Masvidal versus Leon Edwards is a fight before Leon Edwards versus Gilbert. Yeah. Yeah. Rankings wise, hundred percent. But like, and I get it. This whole thing kind of threw things off. Like, had Leon Edwards so. When Gilbert got the Woodley fight, he already had the Damian Maya win, which for me at 170 is pretty big. It's bigger than a Cowboy win. It's bigger than anything that – the biggest win that Leon Edwards has is a Vicente Luque win, and it was years ago. It wasn't this Vicente Luque, you know, the one we've seen. Yeah, yeah. Like I think him, him and Vicente – I want to see that one again. Yeah, a rematch between him and Vicente is probably more competitive than – or more warranted than him fighting Gilbert right now, you know? Right. I but agree. the rankings-wise. And Gilbert's earned it. He's on – nobody else stopped Damian Maya like that. Nobody else beat Woodley like that. Like, even Usman didn't beat Woodley like that. Yeah. All right, but we'll see what uh, Joey Beltran thinks about it. Is he coming on? He is coming on. Just give me one second. I'll let him in. When's his fight? Who's he fighting real quick before he... Uh, this weekend. Um, I forget who what the guy's name is. I'll look him up. He's fighting... He'll tell us. Yeah. You ever see... um? What's that movie? Office Space? Maybe. You never seen that movie? When they're like, what's the guy's name? And it's like, uh, nah, nah here, nah hot, nah hot. Not going to work here anymore. That's for sure. That's what it's like here. It's like, you know, I don't know. His opponent's in trouble, if anything. It's not a good idea to fight Joey Beltran, bare knuckle. Yeah. Guy's been beating up people over burritos for 20 years, you know? Stan, you get, I don't know. All right. Two things, right? You're going to a bare knuckle fight, right? You didn't really prepare for it. Do you get... Or you don't think you're gonna win. You're under you're underprepared, and or you don't think you're gonna win. Do you get hammered before you go out there and fight? Bare knuckle. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> bro, I think there might even be a train of thought like bare knuckle. Like you might be able to get a buzz before you do bare knuckle boxing. Dude, no. that might be something I might throw out to somebody one day. Is like, hey, cake boxing fight, but. 
Me and you drink six beers before we go out. Yeah. Joey. Joey, what's what up, up what big up? dog? What kind of backdrop you got, dude? The San Diego Zoo. I like that. I like that. Can you turn your phone long ways? There it is. The when me- he said San Diego Zoo, I actually thought he was there. <laughs> I was like, wait, you're there? The executioner Joey Beltran. Welcome back to Menace and the Man. How are you? How are you? We're doing good. Bare Knuckle Boxing Champion. You got a fight coming up this weekend, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Live from Salina, like vagina, Kansas. <laughs> I was going to say, why, why'd they leave Florida? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe so it's they, like COVID. They're, they're, you know, they were supposed to have a show in Kansas originally back in like March. And so I just think that's just them. They owe him one, I guess. Yeah. So who- you're making more bread doing bare knuckle fighting than than when you were in UFC. At this point, yeah. That's awesome. But I mean, it wasn't like when I when I when I initially started, it was like no, nah. <laughs> because I was in that that fifty thousand dollar tournament for the finals. But so each person was no, 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 no. And so it wasn't until like. Uh, the Tony Lopez, when I got some love on my contract. All right, but the, the, the second th- Tony, the second Tony Lopez fight. They are now. Super- are you getting Paige Van Zant money? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I mean, hey, dude, I wish, I wish there was a way. Like, I wish that like girls, women in general, were like as thirsty as guys are because then i would i would put my ass all over the internet if it really fucking if it really equated <laughs> likes and views and money the way it does the way our fellow man are like son of a bitch well hang on dude maybe hang fair. on hear me out joey maybe all you right. start taking you know just shots of you and just your jock strap and maybe some gloves and see what happens go it out there yeah you, know? you don't know until you try you know, hashtag that is true. thirsty, hashtag IG model, <laughs> like. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we'll see. Especially if I win this defense. Oh my uh, God! Like, Take one of those. Just, Lay it. Just, just kind of like you know, like uh, Amanda Nunes has just the belt. I was just gonna oh, say. Man. Yeah. 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 Take one of those shots where you like laying down with just the belt cover in the junk area. Wow. That's a few thousand likes at least. No, I have to do it. Now it's out there. I have to do it. Yes. 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 Oh, oh man. They're gonna, they're, Dave Feldman's going to call you up and be like, hey, can you maybe not use our belt in that photo? Hey, can you take that down, please? I know you're <laughs> fighting, but. <laughs> so now what do we uh, what do we know about this next guy? Uh, so he's a, he's a middleweight last fight. So I just imagine he's going to come in at his comfortable walking weight, probably like 215. Um, so, you know, super, super explosive athlete. Uh, played football at Alabama. Whatever the hell that means. I don't know. I guess they're kind of good. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and, you know, hey, man, like he's got – I think he's got six MMA fights, pro MMA fights. He's got two knockouts and bare knuckles, like two spectacular knockouts. So, I mean, they're really painting a story like, uh, you know, old young lion. A young lion coming to take out the old guy, but, you know, that's not going to happen at all. Oh, so is that what you feel like you're getting from the promotion a little bit? You know, I don't know if they necessarily believe that. That's kind of like the narrative that we're, that's getting put out there. I mean... I, I don't I would hope not I mean but you know at the end of the day I still got to go out there and perform and he's in a he's a dangerous man you know anybody above any grown man 180 pounds that knows what he's doing can knock you out like bottom line I mean even smaller guys than that you know what I mean like you, you get caught on the chain you're, you're, you're gonna go out yeah. so it's like by no means am I underestimating this guy or think that I'm gonna walk through him just because I weigh 40 pounds more than him you know but at the same time, man, I'm I'm fucking more than prepared. I've been I've known this is my opponent now for about two months, so this has been day in and day out. Just focus on on beating somebody 
who's going to have a definitive uh, speed and explosion advantage on me. But, you know, I'm definitely more than comfortable to just fucking, you know, drown his ass, drown his ass, put on my pace and put the pace on me. I don't think he's going to be able to hang, man, because he hasn't had to go through. He hasn't had to go through that type of fight. And I, that's facts. That's facts. That's not my opinion. That's facts. He has not fought anybody of my that fights the way that I do. And, yeah, uh, for sure. And you can't rec- you can't replicate that in the gym. You just can't. You just can't. So I'm very confident going into Saturday night for sure. Um, because every fighter is different. You know what I mean? So being a fighter, like. And I've I've had all these different emotions. I've gone into fights cocky. I've gone into fights scared, and I've gone into fights with like this middle ground. You know. Um, like for example, like one fight that what like Stan, one fight that was cocky, and I was like knew I was gonna smash this guy no matter what was against um Hedis. Okay. I was just like, this guy can't knock me out. I'm not gonna let him do anything to me on the ground. He's not tapping me out, I'm gonna smoke him. And then but I think I fight better when I'm like scared. Yeah. I know what you mean. I'm kind of right there with you and like in a way <clears throat> it's not necessarily like afraid of the man it's like more about like afraid of what's going to happen after afraid of all of what's at stake and, and like you know I have a very like vivid image in my head that I've like you know working once again with with, uh, with Caleb mental sense yes. of like yes. I have a symbolism like the symbol of the empty fireplace, the empty mantle over my over my fireplace. Like I'm gonna go home and I have to take down my fucking belts, you know, because I'm not gonna keep them up there if I if I lose. Like yeah. even though I get to keep the physical trophy, if you will, yes. like no, nah, those motherfuckers are coming down if I lose. And and you know, like that's very real, and that that emotion, that pain is driving me. And like, nah, man, I don't want to feel that. He's so good at that because you know, like after a loss, you're like. I'll always remember this loss and that's going to drive me. And then time passes and you're like, that was a long time ago. You know, it's, it's sometimes hard to re get that pain. Caleb is really good at being like, what about this pain? That it's in your, like that's in your house. Yeah. That could happen. You know, you're like, damn. Okay. Yeah, man. So it's like, uh, you know, the whole, the whole pandemic and everything just staying, you know, I, I put in the work in the gym, but also like, you know, week after week with with him, you know, just keeping my mind on task, even though like there's been multiple times, there was multiple times during the pandemic where I, I, I thought I had a fight date and then it fell through. And then like, actually you're not going to fight July 24th. You're going to fight August 21st. Okay. Oh, it's not the 21st. It's the 29th. Well, actually, it's not the 29th. It's fucking, it's 9-11. Hang on, that well, many you times? Know, we, you know, 9-11's full. We're going to need you to wait until October 10th. Like, fuck, man. Okay. There was like, that many switches? Yeah. Holy yeah, yeah, yeah. shit. You know, so, but uh, here we are, now, man. Now, same token. Game day. Game like, day. when that happens and, like, you start get flustered, I go, that guy's dealing with it, too. Yes. Yeah. So, like, if I'm, like... Feeling something way he's feeling it too, and like I'm more, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna handle it better than he's going to. That Absolutely. was always my because people are like, man, I gotta, I gotta this up weight, and this, this is awful. And why me? Like, yo, the other guys that cut weight too, do it better than him. Absolutely. What's Bare Knuckle doing as far as the coronavirus? So they have you guys like in a bubble and all that business and whatnot. Uh, we just got to pass the test when we get there. So, I mean, it's not, like, super crazy. Um, you know, so, I mean, like, it is kind of like, I took one, like, a month ago. I took, well, actually, no, I took one before that. Uh, and then the last one I took was a month ago. So, negative, negative, like, so, like, fuck, man. We'll see. We'll see. And now, uh, w- w- you're in Southern California, right? Correct. You guys are still hey, shut down San Diego there. Zoo, dude. <laughs> San Diego Zoo, dude. I'm here. You got to ask that question for affirmation, you know, just to be sure. Yeah. So, um, no, man, we're in a, we're in a 
good old good old Governor Newsom's tier system. But right now we're in the uh, second. To, we're in the tier where you can kind of do shit, but not too much. And like we're all like we're literally like it's so fucking stupid. Like we're point last week we we're point two away. <clears throat> I think I, I point to a way like we had a we had a rating of like six point nine six point nine, or I, if we have seven, I think it's like ratio like seven people per one hundred thousand, basically like averaged out like then then like doing they would shut us down they would like shut shut us down. But yeah. Seven six point, per, per one hundred thousand. Yeah. So oh, like that. Don't- they're getting stupid. That's where we are right now too. We're on if you have a three percent spike. They'll shut you down. They're starting to shut down the city again. Yeah. So, I mean, I was like, in my head, I was like, okay, so if fucking coronavirus is that horrible and deadly, why wouldn't they shut us down if we're at fucking 6.9? Like, is that, we we really get that point one? Is going to fucking keep us safe? You know, like, shut us down then, motherfuckers. But like, and they're like today, so that was like three weeks ago, and then it was like 6.7, and then today it was 6.5. So it's like, we're at, I guess we're getting better. <laughs> Who knows? So now knows? you were able to train for this and you've been able to train during it? Yeah, the whole time, man. The whole time. I was very fortunate. Um, <clears throat> basically, at the gym I worked at, I, I had uh, the owner let me go in. He had the key. And, uh, you know, early on, like during the lockdown, lockdown, I, I just had to just train with the lights off, park on the other side of the parking lot and just be discreet. You know, but a, yeah. a part of you probably like that, right? Yeah, you know, I said like, we're sneaky, we're sneaky. I'm okay with that. I look at it like, dude, like I was talking to somebody. I was like, you know, bottom line is like, if you've kind of always kind of had a disregard for rules, the kind of person that like runs stop lines and red lights, stop signs and red lights and shit, like you're you're living your life during coronavirus. It's like all the people that like are all fucking really really strict and follow all the rules and like leave notes on the car when they have fucking hit and runs and shit like they're following the rules their lives are really inhibited right now but like no but like uh, while you're in the gym lights are off you're working out you can physically see that nobody else is doing what you're doing you know what i mean yeah i like that not yeah. even nearly because you know you go to practice you work out a bunch of people work out you're like no one worked harder than me but you're in there, you're like, nobody is working, period. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's good for your brain. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I love it. I love like I flourished during coronavirus, man. Yeah. Like, I had another gym that I uh another space I had to pay a little rent to, but dude, I, I had mad clients the whole time I was flourishing, stacking, stacking money. It was all right. It was not that bad. Not that bad. I feel like we were talking about something way cooler before Stan was like, okay, so your fight coming up. Like, how do you feel? <laughs> what were we talking about? Nah, we were talking about the fight. We were just shooting the shit. What did I do? I know that. No, but before that, we were having some good laughs, I feel. And then it got cut short. So oh, good. was it like, a, oh, him with belts and Paige Van Zandt? And- yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so we can go back to that. Yeah, so just when you scroll through Instagram, you see Paige take a picture. Just reenact that. Ooh. Wow, dude. There you go right that there. That is a fucking – you could crush with that. Whatever picture she takes, you do the same thing but with you in it. And the way that she is obviously Bare Knuckles' biggest female draw, you could just post hashtag Bare Knuckles' biggest male draw and have, like, the same photo. <laughs> and then yeah. hashtag this the man show. Get a bikini, get a fucking pink thong, just like her last shot, and just like killing it. Yeah. T- hang on. If you tell people, listen, I want to make more money, so I'm gonna do what Paige is doing. I would imagine there'd be this following behind you, like this guy is. He's sticking to his word. He's just <laughs> and, hang on, and there would be like very little thought behind it. Like, oh, Paige did this. Okay, so I gotta do that. Yeah. It wouldn't have to be like, what should I do for me? And then, yo, you do interviews and you'd be like, well, ever since I hooked up with my new social media manager, Paige Van Zant, I'm just handling everything. Things are on the up and up. Reaping the benefits. Yeah. And even, even the caption. Just like, 
reword the caption to like you. And the only thing where you have to get creative would probably be hashtags. <laughs> hashtags. Oh. Bare knuckle oh. is number one male attraction. Yeah, like <laughs> you know what it is. That's what Van Zandt follower, hashtag page Van Zandt, worshiper. <laughs> and listen, not like I'm not mad at her at all. I I love Oh her. yeah, yeah, no. I don't want this to come off like why is she getting paid a lot of money? Like, not that's not. Yeah, no, we, we're big. Funny. We're we're big Paige Van Zant and Austin Vanderfort supporters here at Menace and the Man. But even her coming to bare knuckle, what do you think about that, Joey? Good. Oh, I'm dude. Like, I welcome uh, all the following that she brings, all the extra eyes. Like now, like, uh, that's immediately like when I meet people in town, and and. Normally, like, people, like, if I'm, in, or if I'm introduced to somebody and they're like, oh, yeah, he's the, fuck, he's the uh, bare knuckle heavyweight champ, blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't like talking about myself. But my friends will talk to me about other people, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh. And then immediately they go, oh, that one girl's doing that now, huh? Uh, that patron's aunt's doing it. So people know, man. And yeah. that's, that's awesome. That's awesome because more eyes on the show, more eyes on me, and more money and all that stuff, and it's it's good for everybody involved. Oh, for sure. And not not that she's a bad fighter <laughs> at all, but like she's yeah. Just, and Paige Van Zandt, no, no. so it's just like you're going to get scars for sure. Yeah, she's no chump by any means, you know. Like, yeah. I mean, realistically, what's her strength? Her strength is probably her striking. If she had, I mean, I was just say she fucking. Yeah, but she's. Uh, she, I think she's a good kickboxer. I don't know how she is with just. She always ends her punches with a nice kick. Yes. Yeah, she had kicked uh, Rowdy Beck. Beck. Rowdy Beck was like the poster girl initially. So. Oh my God! Is that, that a potential rematch? Possibly, yeah. I think Beck. Remember, we had Beck on. Beck bare knuckle waited too long to give Beck a new contract, so she went to Bellator. I don't know if Bellator will let her do the bare knuckle or whatever, but I doubt it. I doubt it. But I mean, that's always like down the road. But even that, hopefully, yeah, they. But she could use that to go back and forth for. Absolutely. But I yeah, could man, see bare, bare knuckle could affect your MMA fights though with the cuts. Yeah, you know, like they're not booking you for a fight even two months out because you could have a cut that takes eight weeks to heal. But yeah, you know, but it's like one of those things where like the suspension depends upon the commission, so it's like right, you know, Dennis will attest to this. Like most of us, we don't really take the uh, unless they're written down. Like we don't really take the recommended suspension. Yeah. Well, they uh, we're, back. we're back in the gym. They hit you guys with that after every fight, pr- pretty much, well, right? I mean, if, if you don't knock the guy out in the first round, you get a 30 day suspension, pretty much. Yeah, like if you get hit, like it's a 30 day suspension minimum. Yeah, yeah, but that's still very exciting news. So now Paige is going to come to bare knuckle, bring some more spotlight. Like someone that me and Menace always praise about, someone Menace is good friends with, uh, similar to you, doesn't get enough attention is Johnny Bedford. Yeah, you know, Johnny Pepper's a, like he's an animal. Yo, he talks to shit too. Like he'll he sees that's where it's at. I don't think that's na- I I he definitely talks shit more than I do when it comes to like fighting whatever, you know? Uh but with you know seeing Conor McGregor on the rise and all these superstars now tend to have a you know, this correlation between them running their mouth and getting these big fights. So Johnny Johnny Bedford's not an idiot. He sees it. So he upped his shit talking, you know, if you will. Uh, I think he's good. I don't, you know. Oh, well, him. I was going to say him and Joey are both made for bare knuckle. So as yeah. they, you know, got to this point, it's going to show for both of them as they bring more eyes to the sport. These guys are going to get the spotlight. You know, I don't know. Like, I, I always, like, go back to, like, I get it. Like, part of me is, like, Dude, we're fucking. Fi- we're gonna get in a fist fight with no gloves. You know that, right? There's gonna be fucking blood splattered everywhere, and right, the scroll's gonna be wide open. Do we really have to talk shit? And then the, uh, another part too is like, hey, I'm fucking sensitive. If you fucking talk shit and you fucking say some personal shit about my fucking about my mom or about my girl, like 
I'm gonna fucking swing on you when I see you. I, I, fucking, <laughs> yeah. I keep, I keep it fucking, way I keep it fucking 100. You fucking say some shit, like I'm gonna fucking step up. We're gonna get him out. We're gonna get it going. We're not gonna make it to make any money. So it's like, I get the, I get the whole thing, but like, if people get a little too personal. Like, it's just like the Izzy and fucking John chose those guys are fucking. Ooh, when Izzy's like your mother would fucking be ashamed of you. Oh, we're we're fighting. We're yeah, fighting. Yeah, we're fighting. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that to Menace. Yeah, have you seen? They're getting personal now. So speaking of which, like. That is that fight next? Like for both guys? Is that their next fight for each guy? Dana just said it's possible. Dana's leaning towards now it's possible, yeah. I want okay. that fight next for both them because if you ask me, and listen, John Jones is a fucking great fighter, still and always will be, but I think he's already past his prime. I don't know. I don't know. I think no, John Jones I think him. I'm not saying he can't be champion. But wait, is he past his 205 prime? But what about his heavyweight prime? Because some heavyweight. I've never seen the heavyweight. I've never seen, I've never seen him at heavyweight. So I don't, who knows? But Joey could attest to this as being a, a guy who fought at heavyweight majority of his career. A lot of heavyweights don't hit their peak until yeah. m- mid to late 30s. For, for sure. For sure. Heavyweights is like, you get a little more. You have a little bit more intelligence. It's a slower game. Like the consequences, obviously, you get one punch knockout. <laughs> you know, the consequences are, are a little more intense. But, you know, for smaller weights, like once you lose a step, you're kind of done. You're kind of done. Heavyweights, like you can be a little smoother, a little smarter, a little more clinch, a little more ground, you know, and you can, you can definitely like extend it, extend it. Exactly like my, you just my said. Opinion on John Jones, my opinion on John Jones is that, like, with with he was just not really motivated for fucking uh, what you call it, Dominic Reyes, and and he was like, and it shows. But I think when he if he if he gets if he were to fight Israel, we would see a fucking he would be back to his prime time form. Absolutely, I don't think he's and he's obviously hasn't taken damage. He's only had like a few like wars, like even those fights with like Tiago, uh, the big guy, fucking San- Tiago Santos. Thompson, yeah. Like he was, he was doing such a good job of like keeping his distance. And John Jones has such a great understanding of distance and range. Like it may seem like he's having a hard fight, but he's just like picking away the fucking push kicks, that fucking oblique kick to the leg, and just like pick, 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 pick. And he may seem like, oh, fuck, he's, like, fucking going through it. But, like, no one's really fucking laid oh, hands He's working. On he's people. working. You know what I mean? That's what that is. Like, fuck. And then, and then like, the Dominic Reyes fight, like, people are like, oh, he lost. Dude, the third round was the only kind of shaky round where it boils down to it. Like, Dominic won the first two. Third round was like, okay, that's where the fight was decided. Because John Jones turned it up and fucking walked his ass down the last two rounds. Like, Dominic died or Dominic ran out of gas and fucking got walked down. Yeah. So, it's like... You know, that was, I really think. Right, let's go overall, back. I want to see. Yeah, I absolutely want to see fucking Izzy, Izzy and John Jones for sure. That'd be awesome. Because how how old is John Jones? Thirty three. Thirty three. He won the title when he was twenty. Twenty three. You're the youngest ever. Yeah. Okay, so let's go in the middle there. Let's say twenty eight year old John Jones or twenty seven year old John Jones. Versus today's John Jones at two oh five. Oh yeah. Well yeah. Still still, but that's like, you know, that doesn't mean that fucking thirty four year old John Jones isn't better than everybody still. Yeah. Hang on. I hang on. I did not say that. Yeah. Oh but said, okay, okay. I said, his, yeah, I said the younger the young John Jones prime. younger John Jones would, would would probably beat him, would probably smoke him. Yeah, I agree with you. There. Yeah, smoke. I don't think smoke, Beat but it. there Beat was it. a let me prove to everybody and make everyone afraid of me. Or does younger John Jones win rounds one and two and older John Jones wins three, four and five? Like that's something we've seen with John Jones. We saw it with Gustafsson. We even saw it a little bit with Santos. Like he knows how to win and fight. In the championship rounds, like if you if, if he starts losing a fight and you go, John, we need this round. He's winning that round. 
Like he almost goes out and he's not cha- – maybe – I mean, granted, it's a fist fight. Anything could happen. He's not challenged enough. So he's almost well, like – Hang on. What I'm talking about, when he was younger, he was going out and finishing dudes within two. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like, fuck that. Like let me put on this fool. Well, I've told you this before, man. It's like – and Joey, you could attest to this. Like you just said it. If you're respectful, you'll get – a certain me. If you disrespect me, I'm coming to fuck you up. Like, really fuck you up. I think that's John Jones. Like, I, I'm i a big Dom Reyes fan, but I think John Jones probably would have fucked him up in that rematch. If you look at the DC rematch, look at the Gustafsson rematch, yeah. they, they both talk shit after the first well, the fight. DC, the DC rematch, like you said before, Stan, he was actually trying to obtain something again. He was getting his belt back. Yeah. The first time, he was just hanging on to his belt. But when he's got to go get things, you get a different side of it where you have to prove, like, yo, I'm I'm taking the belt. Yeah. He, you he, know? He's not the guy to talk shit to, just like Joey Beltran. Like, yo, he, after, after the Reyes, uh, was it Blanchevich? Is that how you say his name? Blahovich. Blahovich. He tweeted, like, should I go down? Should I go get my belt quick? And Dana responded to that, and Dana was like, if John Jones does want to come back, it's John Jones. Yeah, so. I would, hang on, is it crazy? I would like to see John Jones as a, as a champ champ. No, not at all. <laughs> I would like to see that. I wouldn't mind it. And even Joey talking about trash talk, did this guy throw a little bit of shade at you? He threw, Was he tr- talking shit a little bit? Nah, you know, he just, he's doing like, and I think personal, he's got to like do, he's got to do his job to sell the fight and he's got to act confident. And I don't expect him to be like, oh, Joey's going to run me over. <laughs> I sure hope I don't get hurt. Right, right, you know, right. He's just, you know, speaking with confidence and, you know, he's a. Yeah. I've never, I've never seen an athlete like him. I'm gonna be too, he's going to be too fast and explosive. He's got dynamite in his right hand, like blah, 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 blah. Exactly, because I saw that clip, and he was kind of getting like, "Oh, I'm gonna do this and this, and I'm this," and you were just like, "Yeah, whatever he just said." But I'm, you know, I'm gonna fuck him up fight night. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, 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 I got. I like. I don't know. I need to watch like old school like fucking WWF promos to get hyped up. Was, uh, they were, they they were trying so hard. I was like, dude. I was like, finally, I was like, you know what, man, like. I grew up around like people did a lot of fucking dirt, you know. I wasn't a gang member myself, but I grew up a lot of, around a lot of fucking gangsters, and like I always knew, like fucking the fucking one, the loudest in the fucking house was the fucking weakest one. Like you know, fucking real killers move in silence. Yeah, you know, that's just like I don't fucking need to run my yapper, you know. Like, but I get it. I'm trying. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my really my darndest next time to talk shit. I swear. I swear. How? <laughs> How real is the pa- the Paige Van Zant follow? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm trying to do it organically and do it like the natural way, but fuck. Or like maybe like down, Paige Van Zant to... Saturdays is where yeah. like you just take. Just fuck it, Joey. Just go for it. We got your back. We'll comment on every post. We'll hype it up. Hang on. I think there's. Hang there's, on. There's 100 percent something to Man, it. Let's take a poll. On our story, I'll repost on mine okay. and just see how many fans would like to see Joey copying Paige. Paige is obviously doing something right, Joey. So let's just let's snowball off of this and let's figure it out. All right, maybe, maybe. You it's may a strong pick up, maybe. Listen, you may pick up a gay community, but <laughs> listen, those hang on. If you got them on your back, like they spend money. Yo, yeah. Those are like loyal fans. Yes. Yeah. So quick, <laughs> Joey, before we get you out of here, we got uh, a big fight coming up. Khabib, Justin Gaethje. Do you think Justin Gaethje could pull off the upset? No. No, no chance? No. no. Yeah. I'm not, I think it'll be a good fight. Don't get me wrong. I think it'll be a good fight, but I think uh, – I think Khabib drowns him by by probably chokes him out fifth round. Okay, I'm calling choke out fifth round. 
All right, I like that. All right. But I think I think I think Gaethje's gonna test him. He's gonna. I probably will fucking make him bleed his own blood and fucking bust him up. That's not this weekend, right? Next weekend. No, it's the twenty fourth or something like that. Or is it twenty fourth? Yeah. Yeah. So two weeks. Okay. All right, oh, Joey. Yeah. You're the man, Joey. Thank you for the time. Good fight to you Thank this you weekend. Guys. I'm sure you're gonna bloody this dude up, bust him up. Oh yeah, man. That's the plan. And yeah, once you get this done, come back on uh the show and we'll shoot the shit this some more. Got on pay per view as well, right? Uh, oh yeah. The only way you can get it is by downloading the app, the Bare Knuckle TV app on your smart device. And honestly, it's only three ninety nine to start your monthly subscription. So, dude, you get the free paper, you get the live pay per view, and you get access to the whole library for fucking four dollars. Like, that's a steal. Damn. Yeah. You heard that, Dave Feldman. P- pay this man some money, Dave Feldman. You heard that promo right there. This guy's good. Uh, Joey, where can people find you on uh, social media? We got we to gotta build you up. Oh, you find me on Instagram, uh, Joey Beltron underscore MMA, Twitter, Mexicutioner760, and uh, I'm on TikTok now. I got a TikTok now. I think it's the oh, real. Yeah. Oh my god! Please start TikTok and everything. Page does too. You got this, Joey. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll do it. That I think. I think well, that I think will be funny. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Oh yeah. Especially, All right, you guys. Wait, and especially because you've seen that the guy, that one Cholo guy who's blowing up right now. Absolutely, dog face. Dog face. <laughs> That's you uh, all day, Joey Beltron, and you can kick that guy's ass. So all you need is the, hey, go pick up the check. Hell yeah. Go get the bag, right, as Sam will say. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, Joey. All stay right, safe out there. Peace. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Let's, get Let's get our gloves on. Let's get our gloves on. Man. What'd you say? You might have shut him off. Yeah. He was he didn't realize what he was doing there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Even that at one point I wanted to be like, Joey, you think you could like tell them in the background and be quiet? He would have I'm like, everyone shut the fuck up. <laughs> He's a good egg. No, nah, I'm a big Joey Beltron fan. I'm always uh excited talking to him because he's like a real dude. And even you've yeah. s- you've seen that guy I'm talking about, right? Dog face? Yeah. The guy. Is he the guy talking about Jesus? No, he's the guy skateboarding, drinking cran raspberry, listening to Fleetwood Mac. Oh, you sent it to me. Did I send it? I didn't send it to you. Someone sent it to you. Somebody did. Okay. Which I was like, this isn't that funny. But everyone was, I didn't find it that funny either, but everyone was posting like, this is my mood. This is me and shit like that. (sighs) That's Joey Beltron right there. Joey Beltron's the better looking better conditioned and can fight version of that guy. Not being racist. Just, need, just saying. We just need one meme to take off. Who, me right? and you? Yeah. Yeah, even that guy. Like, that guy I was seeing, I followed, like, the link to the video, and it went to his site. The guy got, like, three million views in fucking seven hours. I hate the way the internet works. Hate it. I'm hang on. I'm actually <laughs> so glad the internet works like it does now in my age. Like if this was what it was when I was like 16, I would be probably in jail. Like this will go viral, dude. My fucking <laughs> light this house on fire. Like and I do a flip and do it. Like well, you told me that you and, your, you and your friends were jackass fr- fans back in the day, right? Yeah. Like you were trying hard. Me well, and- no, hang on, hang on, hang on. That video was only for us. We would go show, we'd go to house parties and be like, yo, check this out. And plug in the TV and be like, holy shit, you guys are nuts. I'm like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, if that gets turned in somewhere, like, I might get called. Why would okay. you get, what, what, what did you do on the video? Hypothetically, allegedly. Like, my one buddy played chicken with a train. I did, too, but I jumped, like, way before him. Oh, he did, like, one of those last-second train jumps? 
<laughs> yeah. Like hood sliding cars, but like didn't jump high enough. So I just like landed in the side of the car. We flipped a porta potty on a, one of our buddies. We're like, yo, go with this porta potty and let it smoke bomb. Cause he wasn't doing any like stunts. So like, yo, dude, we got a perfect stunt for you. Like, go to the porta potty and light a smoke bomb. It'd be funny. He's like, oh yeah, I'll take a piss anyway. We're like, all right. <laughs> he went in there. <laughs> Little he know he was a stunt. We fucking pushed the porta potty onto the door, <laughs> so he couldn't get out. <laughs> so fucking uh, great. His friends. leg got caught because he tried to get out of the door. He tried to get out. His leg got caught. On the porta body, right? So, so my buddy like flipped it over. I'm filming, right? Where like all of us could be this kid's ass, but if this kid caught up to me and fought me, I'd be fucked. I was laughing so hard, like my body became like like I couldn't I had no strength. Like you wouldn't have been able to defend yourself. Right. He ran at the other guys. I'm like, Phew. so he goes home. We we whatever. Go about our day. Then we're like, yo, let's go fucking pick up. I think his name was like Boner or something like that, whatever. So we go over to his house. He's waiting outside with a bat. And we're like, put the fucking bat away. Like, shut, like, so fuck you guys. And then from now on, we, from then on, we start calling him shithead. <laughs> but he was like, yeah, I threw up t- three times on the way home. <laughs> but his shirt was like, his shirt was like yellowy tan with chunks on it. It was shit in his ass. <laughs> yeah, it was so that was on the video. Uh we drop kicked a lot of like uh like you know when people blow so up those like big all, Christmas all inspired by Jackass. Yeah. Were you a CKY fan? Did you know Yeah, but you had to buy that. So I watched a like a few stunts, but CKY was more skateboarding, though. Same thing, yeah. Um, jackass, but with skateboarding in it. Yeah. There was more skateboarding, so like I would watch my buddies, and so in CKY, they drop, they drop that like that dummy off the bridge onto the car, right? Yeah, yeah. And even I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And um, they were just jackass. It was the same people that went to do jackass. So Johnny Knoxville did Jackass. He had a couple of friends, and then he brought in the CKY guys, and that was yeah. Jackass. Yeah. CKY was um, Bam Margera. Yeah. What do you have, noises going on? What? Yeah, I got ghosts. What do you got there, your lady friend? Yeah. Or Lewis oh. checking in on you? No, he, he hasn't been here. He's moving out. No. He's moving out. Why? Uh, he hasn't been here really in like a, a while. Is he moving in with Yessi? Essentially. Or is he like, move? Or his lady friend, I should say. Or is he yeah, moving? Or is he moving to back up state? No, he's just moving in with his lady. I see. So, what are you gonna do with down there? Have space. Have space or find someone else? Ah, probably just have space. Okay. Nice little experiment you did there. So, well, I mean, it, hang on. It's exactly one year. That's what He moved in like September, October. It's October now. Okay. So one year. Yeah. You were a landlord for one year. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to, the thing is I almost want to speak to him like was I good? <laughs> was, there anything, was there anything I like anything you didn't like any, you know what I mean? Did you I like, had all the entities, you know? Did you hate me for any reason? Yeah. No, nah, you were a good landlord. Like you didn't move out because like you didn't like me, right? No, nah, he's or, probably probably like you said he hasn't been there and it's more convenient to not spend the money and Right. Well, him and his lady are trying to s- save up and buy a place. Okay. I don't know if they're buying a place or renting or whatever, but like he's like, I think you know he feels some type of way. I'm like, yo, man, I get it. It's not like I think you're gonna live with me forever. It's not. I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm not. You know. Yeah. All right. Cool. 
but even um so we missed the episode last week Israel Adesanya Jared should be joining us in a few minutes but we'll talk about Israel Adesanya real quick is he the greatest middleweight of all time or another question so even that like I saw that that's the same Aldo's the best featherweight of all time conversation like MMA is so young in history that yeah. that like Khabib's the best lightweight of all time. Right. Usman might be the best welterweight of all time. Adesanya might be the no, best. No, he still has a lot of proving to do. But you get Usman. what but you get what yes. I mean. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the UFC always says those things also for marketing. But but essentially they are kind of true. If the sports evolving every day or been evolving at a crazy rate the last 20 years. Agreed. Yeah. And this, you know, like Usman, yeah. is, is Usman beating Matt Hughes? Yeah. He'd fucking kill Matt Hughes. Yeah. You know what I mean? He'd be like, he'd be a foot taller than Matt Hughes or look a foot taller than Matt Hughes and he'd probably fuck Matt Hughes up. Yeah. You know, like no, the way... Yeah. You're not wrong there. Yeah, so Adesanya... Might be the greatest middleweight of all time, but even that, you want to see him against John Jones. What's left for him at middleweight? No, no. Uh, hang on. You're telling me Anderson Silva in his prime versus. My I don't mom. know, dude. So, prime Anderson versus prime Adesanya? You do- oh, hang on, hang on. I'm jumping away, class, right? No, they're 85. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, that if anything, that's the eighty-five goat is Anderson or is it Adesanya? I'm s- right now Adesanya. Well, I've, I've watched like remember when Anderson fought Forrest Griffin? Yeah, made him look. He good. made him look like he didn't even know how to fight at all. Yeah, this is true. Now, also with evolution and the bit of boom of the sport, like I that's that's a real thing too. Also, styles make fights. That was also a bad stylistic matchup for four. Okay, let's say let's say Stylebender fought that same. He would do the same thing. Yeah, Stylebender versus Forrest on the feet, probably. You don't think Stylebender's from a stand-up background? He's got. I, I mean, I just don't want to talk bad about Anderson. Forrest. Forrest. Neither do I. Hey, why'd you bring it up? I don't want to bring that up. Yes. But so, your goat all time at one eighty five was Anderson Silva. I I think so. So, what does Israel got to do? Does he have to match the whatever Anderson yeah, had? He beats John Jones. Boom, goat. Well, I'm saying Anderson had what do you have? Ten title defenses or eleven? Whatever the record is, something like yeah, he had a lot. Does Israel got to match that to be the best of all time? Well, he's already like when you look, I saw, I saw a meme today of like the people he's beat. Like he only has like three people left in his division that you're like, uh, okay. Yeah. Like for him to get to the title shot, he had to fight a lot of the top 15. Yeah. yeah. Like he's fought everyone pretty much. Like I guess you fight, you beat everybody. I guess fight in high end. Or, well, even that's something we could segue to is Chris Weidman's coming out saying he has the the style to beat Adesanya, and then Chael Sonnen, Chael Sonnen doubled down on it, said it, and then Chael had Weidman on the show to talk about it. Wow, because I've been seeing his post like all American. Wait, and then when Weidman went on Chael's show, he doubled down on it again and said. My style, pressure, takedowns, going forward is what could beat Adesanya. Tough. Could Weidman beat him? Yeah. Would he beat him? Like, no. Does he have a physical chance as a human being with two arms and two legs? Yes. Would he beat him? Probably not. I'm going to say 
It's not. It's definitely not a good matchup for style for Adis Adesanya. Yes, I would bet my house right now when Weidman beat Silva that Weidman would beat Adesanya. You're saying that Weidman a few years ago. That dude, that's like 2015, wasn't it? I want to say even longer ago than that. 14, 13, maybe. Let me see. Because listen, I'm I'm sitting here as a fighter in front of you. The reason why I retired is because my body wasn't recovering like it used to. My drive isn't the same as it used to be. Probably from decreasing in testosterone. Like, not that. Yeah, I. That was 2013. He beat Anderson. Yeah, I'd bet the house on it. Yeah, that was 28 year old. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's seven years ago. Yeah, and that's 28, 29 year old Wyman versus 36 year old Wyman. All right, I could see that. Yeah, there was a point when Wyman looked and was unstoppable. Yes. Where his iron chin, the punches didn't hurt him. His wrestling was relentless. Cardio was relentless. But we've talked about this. I know you've said this many times. Easier to become champion than it is to stay champion. For sure. And that, and I mean, so like I was speaking to uh, Joey earlier about like, uh, things that hurt you physically when you see it fucking he can look over there and be like yo I want that belt I need to have that belt back like what does it take above fucking his he changed location is he living in like North Carolina now he moved closer to Wonder Boy yeah South Carolina I think some Carolina North or South one of them so he's done up here Apparently, yeah, he's in. We got to get him on the show and see why he moved. Yeah, he's done with Long Island. I but, mean, I get it; it's expensive, and like, bro, he this, doesn't have a ton of training partners. And this pandemic, a lot of people moved out of New York. A lot of his people. gym was closed for fucking how long? Like real estate, I heard is pop. We'd have to ask Aya Quinta too about it, and anyone we know in real estate. I heard real estate's popping right now because people are moving. Insane. Mo- People are moving out of the so, out of the city, and so, people are yes. moving out of New York. So it's like this. This is why I've talked to a few of my buddies. Like, let's say I get four hundred. My house gets appraised for four hundred thousand dollars, right? I could be like, I want four sixty, and so I'm like, okay. And they're underwater when they buy the house. Yeah, that's how bad. That's how insane it is right now. And that's people just so fed up with the politics. And all that shit going on in the city, they're getting out. We need to get out on the show now. Now. Oh, uh, what? Talk real estate? I want that. And I want to know about Wyman. Yeah. We got to shoot that shot. It's been. A, we actually haven't had Aya Quinta back on the show since like episode. I think it's he was. The phone. The phone era. Yeah. I think he was like episode five. But Jared is taking forever, but he should jump on any minute. So Adesanya. Next fight will be blank. Will it be John Jones? At 185, there's no real... The the winner of Cannoneer okay. versus Whitaker. Okay. The winner that gets the title fight for 185? Yeah. There's no one else even close. Okay. I'm cool with that. That makes sense. Um... John, I mean, Izzy could go. Could Izzy go double champ? Let's say he beats John Jones somehow. I mean, could he be like, yo, on paper, he fucks John Jones up on the feet. You know what I mean? Like, if you just look at on paper, absolutely. He's got better. John Jones is like way longer. But Israel Adesanya is a kickboxing striking world champion John Jones whenever he's found any trouble on the feet he shoots for a double leg 
You know what I mean? Like on paper, you should say style has got better striking. I'm not saying that. I'm saying on paper. Who, who's had better striking than John Jones? Um, you could say what's his name gave him some trouble. Uh, Reyes was out striking, even if whatever happened, well, no, the circumstances wasn't motivated. Reyes was out striking him. He started shooting for takedowns. Uh, Gustafsson was out striking him. He started looking for the clinch. I'm sure there's other examples too, but I'm saying that's part of his game, like where John's threat. Well, that's why it's MMA. That's why he's not yeah. a kickbox. Yeah, I'm saying on the feet, Adesanya should beat him, yeah. but I think when Jones brings in those other elements. It's easy fight for Jones. Easy fight. Easy fight. Size, grappling advantage, range advantage. But that what, too. What are the ages again? I think Izzy is 28 or 31. Izzy's 31. Jones is 33. Izzy has 100 combat fights. Izzy's got way more striking fights, yes. Yeah, Izzy's I mean, one. Is he knocking people out in the first round? He's not knocking anyone out in kickboxing fights, no. Or he's knocking out some people. So yeah. I don't know how accurate, but Wikipedia has him at 75 and 5 in kickboxing. I think I saw 75 and 7 on the UFC. Like, 20, 29 knockouts. He's knocking out people in MMA, absolutely. In MMA, he's 20 and 0 with 15 knockouts. But is he not? Okay. We, we've never even seen. Have we ever even seen. So you have John Jones. Have we ever even seen John Jones rocked? Gustafsson. You've seen him punched. You never seen him like, oh shit, John Jones is about to get knocked out. You've he seen never him, got wobbly need. You've seen him hit and then he f- frames you and dances away. Yeah. And then you go, oh wait, he hit John Jones. John That's Jones. So funny. That's exactly how he does it. Yeah. <laughs> if you hit him, he frames you and distances distances himself and Because nobody has longer arms than him. Um so Except for Stefan Struve, who is in his weight class. Dom Reyes hit him. Santos hit him. They didn't really hurt him. They, like, touched him. Machida hit him with a good left hand. He walked right through it. Um, Gustav, you know, like, the, people have touched him. They didn't, you know. No, I, I can't remember ever seeing him wobbled or hurt. And then he posted the picture. He's going back and forth with what's his name on social media right now. Adesanya. He sent, He's like, I- I'll rip your arm off. Well, no, he sent Adesanya a picture. He's like, while you're going through, while you're doing whatever, researching me, see if you could find a picture of this like me. And he sent a, a, a picture of me like this. And he sent Adesanya a picture of Adesanya laying on the ground, knocked out. Ah, oh, yikes. Yeah. Because Adesanya got knocked out once in kickboxing. Like flatlined, like got laid out and like was laid out, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's going to happen when out of 75, if John Jones fought 75 times, somebody's going to knock him out. You think? Yes. Maybe John Jones is the guy. 75 times, one person is going to get him. We've talked about it. Like, remember, you, you've you never completely lost consciousness, right? No, I mean... I don't remember things, but I've never been asleep. You never woke up and were like, what happened in the last couple minutes? Right, right. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's ever happened to John Jones. I've always woke up and be like, what? This is bullshit. We'd have to ask. Or not woke up and just like, really? We'd have to ask, like, the, the, the fights between him and his brothers growing up if he's ever been knocked out. But I want to say no. I, I don't think he's ever been. Brothers usually don't fight to that extent. But when you're that big, maybe you just don't even mean to do it. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, <clears throat> you don't have any brothers, right? Nope. Generally. Um, I'm saying this generally because people are like, what do you mean? I punched my brother last week. Like, it stops. Like, 
when you hit puberty, kind of like, like uh, not when you hit puberty, but like, let's say your senior year or your junior year, you stop fighting your brother. Okay. I, I think as long as you're in relatively close age, like let's say your little brother's a dickhead. He's in sixth grade. You're in 10th grade. He deserves it. You're gonna you whoop his ass. You know what I mean? Like, but what if they- my older brother is five years older than me? So I decided I I not decide, but I just I couldn't beat him. So I stopped trying. What if things were different in the Jones household? I again, I'm gonna yeah. He's still an athlete. What, I mean, I I would have to know the age differences. The whole that's because if you're that much older and that much bigger and stronger, you don't want to like. Even if you can be fully mad, you're not trying to knock your brother out. I, I think they're all Irish twins, if I'm not mistaken. So, Arthur Jones. So, they may be trying to knock each other out, but the other one has the athletic ability to not allow that. You know what I'm saying? Um. So, Chandler Jones is 30. John Jones is 33. Arthur Jones is 34. Arthur Jones is the biggest one of them. He's the one who, uh, like, size-wise, you know what I mean? He's the one that John Jones actually says can kick his ass. Like, says, my whole life, Chandler, I mean, uh, Arthur beat me up. Yeah, but in in reality, John Jones can beat up his brother, Arthur. I mean, it'd be a tough fight, but... He says no. That's just respect. Okay. I thought it was not Car- real. You never say that you can't beat up Dean. You always say you'll beat Dean up. <laughs> Hang on. Dean's not bigger than me. Dean's not taller than you? Taller, but not bigger. Okay. And he's taller by me by like maybe two inches. Two inches is a lot. Okay, I beat up guys that were six one. It was right there. You could have been like, that's what she said. <laughs> it was one of those type of situations. Uh, you try to set me up. I feel. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think uh, I'm not going to wait for Jared because I think Jared's taking too long. Yeah, it's 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 cut to nine. I, I, hey, well, we'll preview. Yeah. We'll talk. We got Co- Corey Sanhagen, Marlon Marias. What do you got? I got Marlon. All day. Yeah, I think he's bigger, stronger. He's I'm not gonna say he's better than better at jujitsu, but he knows a lot of jujitsu where uh San Hagen's not gonna be able to get anything on him. You know what's and uh what's the other fight? You know that the the French dude, Mar Marakowani? I forget how to pronounce his name. You know him if you've seen him. The guy from like Finland or he's fighting Edson Barbosa at 145. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. He's like a good looking dude. Yeah. Oh my God. He's a fucking, he's, and he's charismatic he's got, too. He's like white eyes, right? Like good hair, like a little stubble beard. And like when he wins fights, he'll be like, I knew that was going to happen. He talks like that. Like, yeah, like I knew. What, what do you want? What do you want me to say? Knockout. Knew it was going to happen. <laughs> he's like real cocky. Uh, how but, old Edson? Um, I want like to we we talk about this all the time, man. You only have so many fights, and Edson's been in some wars. He's thirty four. Yeah. He's thirty four. But the thing that's crazy about this is, um, he's the and what's Marias? Marias is thirty two. So Edson's the co-main event. Marias is the main event. Those two guys have known each other since they were like little kids. Mm. Like they moved to America together. So you're saying if Edson loses, it could affect Mariah. It could be tough, yeah. But even like that type of situation, yeah, it's like it's like you and LaFlair or you and Wade. The night it's like the Long Island fight that night, or like you guys being the main event and the co main event, but you guys are like this, grew up training together, fighting together. And nothing my loss had nothing to do with Ryan getting flatlined. I know, but you know what I'm saying. Like sometimes that could, like I've heard the Pettis brothers the say Pettis they. Pettis brothers, yes, is more yeah. of a. And or I've heard, Raquel and Rocky. 
Well, they, they even made it a big thing with um, those are the same person. Sorry, the city kickboxing gym at that last UFC, they made a thing about it too. They had four guys on the card. They had Stylebender, Kai Car France, some other guy. Like they had, they had four guys on the card. So and a couple of them lost. So it's like, oh shit. I got to go out there now and yeah, for me, it never affected me because I used to wrestle, you know, you wrestle in your a wrestling match, you wrestle and you train with your guys every day and the guy before you might lose. Yes. But even I That's was going to mo- motivate you. You can't be like, Oh, my friend lost. Like, uh, you know, you got to go out there and put on. Yeah. Well, I was just saying like, it's fucking cool that these two guys came from Brazil together like when they both came to America, I lived in Florida at the time, and they yeah. both came as Brazilians to Florida, spoke no English, and I was at American Top Team. They went to um, it was called the Armory. Remember that guy Hermes Franca? Yeah, it was like Hermes Franca, Kurt Pellegrino. Yeah, like, like another little group of guys had a gym in Florida, and that's where Mariah said. I thought Perk up or Perk. Oh. Kurt Pellegrino had a gym in Jersey. Yes, and at one point he moved to Florida, had a gym in Florida. And then these guys came and it was it turned out to be Marlon Marias and Edson Barbosa. And at oh. at the time it was just two badass Brazilian dudes who knew how to kickbox. Right. Marlon was actually the one who they were like, Yeah, he's okay. This guy's really good. Like Edson Edson was the guy, Marlon was like his little friend. Wow. Yeah. Like, even back to LaFleur, I heard LaFleur say that. Like, the only person that he ever sized up at Ring of Combat that he was like, oh, okay, was Edson. Like, and Edson was a lightweight. Like, he saw Edson and was like, yo, that guy looks fucking serious. Yeah. Back in the day. And he beat uh, Dom Stanko. Unlucky. Very unlucky. But, is that the only two fights on the card that are worth a... Uh... Yep. Marlon Marias versus Corey Sanhagen. We're going Marlon. But Corey could win that, but it'll be tough. Yeah, no. And then, what's his name? <laughs> Maquan Americani. Now, Americani, is there any chance they're trying to put him on? Like, yo, Possibly, this is your yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean... Because Edson's kind of the – he's kind of the gatekeeper, no? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's even great, too. If you could see it. Look at Amir Khani's photo on the uh, – that's his photo, like on his thing for his record. Wow. <laughs> on sure dog? On uh, Tapology. Jesus. Well, that's amazing. Look at that. Now we'll look at Dennis Bermudez's before we get out of here. X. I think you is like a smile with fangs. On Tapology, I never checked that website. It's um all the records. I was going sure dog. So yeah, you're uh you flexing. Oh, that's that's uh, that's young menace. That's that's my tough. Uh, yeah. Tough Tough finale. Yeah. Young Menace. But uh, we'll get to Ricardo Lamas another time. Jared, we'll try to figure out something with Jared. Jared's a no-show on us. We'll get uh, – we don't have enough time for Gregor either, so we'll try and – we'll try and fit him on the next episode, I guess. Who? Gillespie? Yeah. Maybe. Him and Weidman. Like, Weidman, too. We're on the fence with. But, oh, the other thing you saw, something we didn't get to talk about last week, you saw Dana White, Conor McGregor leaking tweet, leaking uh, text messages. Uh, is Conor fighting Dustin Poirier for a profit? Like a, a non-profit? Nope. Charity? They threw it out there. UFC pretty much put the axe in it by offering him the actual bout. So, there's probably a loophole in the UFC contract where you probably could do a charity of some kind. I know they do have a a loophole or a rule where you can't do things that could potentially hurt you, right? Or something like that. Yeah. There's probably... We we can't, like, technically as a UFC athlete, you can't own a motorcycle. But I'm sure they... Yeah, a lot do. 
And then they started giving away motorcycles. I was like, what? You fucking idiots. I think that the UFC offered it officially as a legal sense of you can't do it as a charity because we offered you it as a professional bout. Wow. Yeah. I think they are kind of at odds with Conor right now. So you didn't see that? Dana White, Conor McGregor leaked text messages. Uh -uh. He leaked like a, a Instagram conversation between him and Dana White. And it was Dana White basically said like, we can't find a fight for Conor right now or something like that. And Conor was like, what are you talking about? I've been trying to fight for months. And then he leaked the messages of his conversation with Dana White. And Conor doesn't look bad in it. Conor's saying like, yo, I want to fight Gaethje. I'll fight anyone you have for me in May. And the UFC basically gave him like the listen, we can't generate enough buzz or make enough money with it right now. So you got to wait. And then the only thing they offered him was the replacement to be the replacement for Khabib versus uh, Tony. And he turned that, was, that way happened though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He turned it down and was like, I'm not a backup fighter. I'm fucking Conor McGregor. Right. And then he leaked the messages. And in the leaked messages, he was like, I'll fight Gaethje or whoever in May. And he said he wanted to fight Diego Sanchez in Dublin. I saw that. I thought that was like fake. No, that was real. Well, I thought it was just like, let me get real let me get some money real quick. Probably, but like Yeah, he would fucking smoke Diego. But he called out yeah, you know, Diego was gun ho on it. Diego was like like Conor McGregor recognizes I'm a good fighter, and he goes out and gets fucking annihilated by Who Matthews. Fuck? Yeah, but that's where Conor's at. Had, had, had Diego won, that fight could have maybe happened. Oh, a million percent, million percent. Like Conor, I think has that ability to call those shots, kind of. But even yeah. um. Oh, that's Con that's what Dana was pissed about. Um, Connor said, "I want Diego," and Dana wrote, "If we make that fight, they'll revoke our license." Meaning, like the fight's not fair. You know what I mean? Connor posted that, so Diego definitely saw that and was like, "Fuck you, Dana, fucking dick." Like you don't think I could beat this fucking guy? I do like how Diego's like, okay. Before this last fight, like, I'm not chasing the title anymore. Like, it's not my destiny. I'm just here to fight. And a lot of pressure has been released. I'm going to do better. I think I – did I call you? I forget what I thought. They're like, yeah, he just bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, shot. How did he get finished, though? Who? Diego? Diego. He, yeah. didn't, get, he didn't get finished in that fight, did he? Said, How did he not? Just I tough. Th Toughness, and I think Jake Matthews was fighting Diego Sanchez. Uh, you know what I mean? Like he didn't, yeah. he didn't want to. He even said it in the fight. He's like, once he, what did he say? He said something like, the first time he punched him, he was like, oh man, I'm punching Diego Sanchez. Like I'm, oh man, I'm punching Diego Sanchez. Like I feel bad for him, or like bad for this it. guy's a legend. Bad, bad for it. He's a legend. Like he didn't, yeah, like he didn't want to fight Diego. Uh, like he, I'll have to reread it and find the interview, but he said like he didn't want to hurt Diego. That's wild. Yeah. Where I'm going in and trying to finish that fight a snap. I was going to say, Menace would have hurt Diego that night. Yeah. Which I tried to. Yeah. But, so we'll call this episode 92. Menace, it was it, good seeing you. It is. it is episode 92. Oh, absolutely. We'll figure things out with Gregor again in the future. Chris Weidman. Okay. And Ricardo Lamas, we actually do want to work that one out. So we'll figure that one out <laughs> soon. <laughs> All right. Shake and bake. All right, Menace. Always a pleasure. Likewise. Well, see you later. <laughs>